afternoon, brothers and sisters. This is uh, our old restoration. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, Bishop Walkers from Pakistan, uh, Reverend Pastor Reginald from Nigeria, and uh, Pastor Jennifer, oh, Reverend Edna, uh, welcome. <laughs> And uh, today we have a Reverend Gabriel uh, giving a, a first uh, speech. Uh, the uh, in this month of uh, uh, new month, June. Okay, uh, let me start with a prayer. Uh, good afternoon, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Parent. Uh, we are so grateful for being here together in this uh, new day, a new month, new Sunday of this um, year 2023. Uh, Heavenly Father, the, we are so blessed by receiving the, uh, so much guidance and so much inspiration and so much the spirit, experience of your spirit through our life because of the uh, Savior, uh, Jesus Christ uh, really uh, brought uh, an amazing, amazing grace, amazing grace to each one of us, and we can uh, dominate uh, over the all the uh, iniquity and the sins, and uh, also the uh, all the diseases and sickness. Heavenly Father, today uh, this new month of June. The, we are about to discover uh, more uh, wonders and grace uh, from the uh, Jesus Christ, and especially as a life of the uh, Christian living. And I really uh, pray that we can receive the uh, proper instruction and the proper spirit that God really guide us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Once again, I pray together with all brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So now uh, I want to give a, a short announcement, and we're going to get to the word soon. Okay, this is... Uh, So our restoration, uh, this month of June, we have a new theme. Uh, this uh, theme is the transparent uh, Christian living. Uh, so uh, the first speaker uh, this month is uh, Reverend uh, Gabriel. Uh, so the uh, we have, uh, I think, four, four Sunday. Uh, the foundation scripture is Romans 13, uh, 11 to 14. And also the second Corinthians 4, uh, 1 to 2. So uh, in our restoration, we are uh, discovering the meaning and also the implementation of this concept of restoration the uh, restoration means the act or process of returning the something to its original condition. Uh, Acts 3.21 said that heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything. So God is the God of restoration, God of salvation. Uh, basically, God will work uh, throughout the, our life and our human history uh, to bring the, his ideal or his vision, vision or uh, his purpose into reality because that was lost in the beginning. So the God, uh, Revelation 22, 13, 14 said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last the beginning and the end. 
Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gate. Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we've been uh, bringing the, uh, the word into the, uh, our life and our action. And there are so many things already uh, accomplished or implemented through the, our uh, actions. Uh, so this was the last Saturday, May 27th, uh, New York Interface Peace March. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, gathering of the all faith leaders. And uh, you can see the Reverend Bruce and the Reverend Bishop Moise, and uh, we are all marched around the UN, United Nations, uh, to bring the peace and the unity and the rec reconciliation. And the upcoming program, Next Hour Restoration, is a Sunday, June 11. And uh, we have Reverend Edna uh, to give uh, his speech and presentation about the same theme that we are uh, about to discover today. And uh, 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 there are so many continuous effort to educate us and uh, enlighten us through the world. So this is uh, effective stewardship, uh, June 9 to 11. Uh, this is a Zoom program, 8 p.m. and Saturday, 10 a.m. Uh, sponsored by the Reverend Gabriel and the Yoshua hands and feet. Uh, please join and uh, really enrich your life of attendance to the uh, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And the prayer summit. The, uh, this is a really uh, amazing opportunity for the all leaders, faith leaders and the Christian leaders, pastors, evangelists, all are welcomed to June 17th, uh, 2023, 10 a.m. at the St. Uh, Thomas AM Zion Church. Uh, it's in Harvest Row, New York. It's uh, our Bishop Roger McKenzie uh, is the speaker, uh, keynote speaker, and uh, Reverend Edward Holmes, uh, hosting pastor, and also the evangelist, uh, Sonia Martin, will lead, will lead the uh, prayer uh, for the future of the church. Okay, please don't miss this opportunity and uh, all are welcome. Okay, so let's get to the... Hello. Welcome, uh, Reverend Galvan and uh, Jennifer. Uh, welcome. Uh, Pastor Reginald, you said that you have uh, some presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And uh, so let's welcome the uh, Reverend Reginald. Uh, the, his, uh, his choir is really ready and eager to perform for all of us to uplift our spirit. Okay, Reverend Reginald, go ahead. With my voice that I to the ends of the earth, singing praise to you, God. I bless you, Lord, forevermore. With my voice, 
things that I do the ends of the earth to give way to your love. I bless you alone forevermore. With my voice, he said I to the ends of the earth. Singing praise to the Lord, I bless you, Lord, forevermore. Remember the that I, with my voice, means that I, to the end, the end of the singing praise to the Lord, I bless you, Lord, forevermore. I worship you, Lord, from the top of my eyes. I love you, Lord, with all of my soul. I praise you, Lord, forevermore. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord, from the top of my eyes. I praise you, Lord. We are about to say, I praise you, Lord, forevermore. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank God to bless you because you are mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for the grace and privilege to start yet another brand new month, the sixth month in the year 2023, signifying the end of the first quarter. Of this year father it's your by your grace by your mercy thank you because of the mighty god thank you lord for your salvation upon our life thank you lord for bringing us together again at the time like this to learn at your feet but i pray grace to be doers of your word release unto us O lord in jesus name but i pray lord that grace to live a transparent life both spiritual and physically that will provoke great achievement for us and success for us in our ministry and life release unto as many that are on this platform right now in the name of jesus christ but as who progresses on progress with us so lord do what no man can do as your comfort let them hear you lord not me but you almighty god thank you because of the mighty god as your comfort to lord let it come with grace let it come with salvation let it come with healing. Let it come with deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it come, O oh Lord. Let it all come, O oh Lord, with a view, O oh Lord, to reposition destiny, to reposition ministries that are having challenges on this platform. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, because it's done. Take all the glory. Take all the, take all the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Praise the Lord. Alone. Once again, I want to sincerely appreciate every ministers that have taken their time to be at our exploration every Sunday. I want to uh, once again appreciate our only one, our Reverend Edna. It has been some one or two, three weeks. I know you have been firing for God. You are welcome, sir. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you richly in Jesus' name. And I want to encourage your place next Saturday, next Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. That program you saw will be coming up. I'll be taking the teaching on effective stewardship. Effective, effective stewardship. And the, the Zoom number is there. It's on Zoom. Next Saturday, 10 a.m. in the morning. God bless you richly as you join to listen to yet another expositions concerning the word of God that will better our ministries in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we have had it on the 17th of June. It's another great moment. We want to begin to look at the future of the church with particular reference to America and the 21st century. And we have seen it's going to be another great, great, great time of refreshing the Lord. Please do your do register, register yourself. If you cannot come as a minister, please encourage your leaders, encourage your leaders in your various churches to attend.
it is very, very good. Success without a successor is a failure. I repeat, success without a successor is a failure. You begin to train up those that will succeed you as far as the ministry is concerned. Because why is that, you know, there is nothing like sit down, sit down tight forever there. There will be a time that are certain things we cannot do. And we need to bring up people to begin to see how to take over from us as time goes on. And that can only be done when we give them out for training, for training, for attending programs that will enhance their knowledge. We want to use this medium, through this medium, by the grace of God, for all of our ministers that are here, be an agent of change, agent of change, as far as the face of the church is, is as at this present. And God will help all of us to be able to achieve that great desire to reposition our churches and the U.S. as a whole in the name of Jesus Christ. By the special grace of Almighty God, the theme for this month of June is Transparent Christian Living. Transparent Christian Living. I will lay the foundation, hallelujah, and I believe God strongly that uh, our event Edna and other great ministers of God that will be coming subsequently in the month, we dig more into it. Hallelujah. So what I'm going to be doing today is to lay the foundation. Praise the Lord. Transparent <laughs> Christian living. You will agree with me that one of the hallmark of a minute for a minister to, to have success in ministry and life is to consciously and the unconsciously live a transparent Christian life. It is not enough to say, I am a Christian. Hallelujah. It is not, it's not enough to be a leader in a church when one, as a person, is not living a transparent life. I have every grace of God to teach this topic because why, by His grace, I live a transparent life. Christian life, both spiritually and physically, and as far as the ministry is concerned. But go with me holistically this evening to Romans chapter 13, and verse, I'm reading quickly verse uh, 11 to 14, from verse 11 to 14. I'll be reading some of these scriptures, and I want us to constrain to time. I will not be reading some of it, but let's go straight away to Romans 13, and I'm reading verse 11 to 14. Hallelujah. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness and in chamberlain and wantonness, not in strive and envying. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lost Dear of hallelujah. This was revelation given to Brother Paul to the Roman church. Hallelujah. And when we look at it today, we represent that area. And God is speaking to you and me today that the night is fast spent and our salvation is nearer than when we first believe, trying to point to us that we're already in the end time, that there is no room for parking space, there is no room for you and me to relax in this Christian journey because much is demanded of you and me and begin to let us know the need for us to do away with every works of darkness not just some but every works of darkness every works of darkness i don't I, I, every, work of, every one of darkness anything that has to do with secrecy it is not of god when it comes to the life of a minister hallelujah a minister must live a transparent life so in other words do away with every works of darkness and then put on the old armor of light 
put on the armor of light, totality, absolutely, completely, the armor of light, because we as, as leaders, we as ministers, we are light to our own generation. We are light to those members. They are looking onto us as, the, as their role model. And God is telling us through his word here that we should lead, we should, we should walk in honesty day and night. Day and night. There's no need for me to envy you. There's no need for you to envy me. There's no need for me to envy Reverend Edna. Why must I envy him? Hallelujah. His grace is anointed from my own anointing. If the world is so large. Look at the bed. The bed are flying. All the bed are flying. You can never see anyone colliding. Hallelujah. They fly freely. So therefore, the anointing is so big that no, there's no need for me to envy Bishop Wakas. And there's no need for Bishop Wakas to envy me and parry pursue like that. Hallelujah. So the, the word of God is saying, look, there is no need for strive. There's no need for us to quarrel. There's no need for us to, 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 to start uh, uh, arguing with one another unnecessarily because strive and unnecessary argument belong to devil. And then God is trying to bring me and you to the consciousness of his word that we should put on Jesus Christ and make no provision at all for the flesh. Make no provision at all for the flesh. Brother and sister, I want to let you know as ministers, the flesh will come. The flesh will definitely come. But from the one, make up your mind not to make provision for the flesh. Because why? The flesh is always there to drag man to the, to the other side, which is the negative side, which is the devil's side. Hallelujah. There is no small sin and there is no big sin. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. And I want to appreciate God for all of us on this platform that God that has been helping us to remain steadfast in our ministry will continue to be with every one of us on this platform, be with you in life and ministry and to succeed and to make heaven at the end of the day in the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 Hallelujah. The word of God speaking as to you and me again. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We faint not. We must not be tired. We must not be tired. Discouragement will come. We must not be tired. Hallelujah. This discouragement will come. We must not be what? Tired. It is forward ever, backward never. We must not give room for indecency. We must not give room for indiscipline. When we are disciplined, our members will be what? Will be disciplined simultaneously. If we live a transparent life, our leaders have no option but to fall in. To fall in. Hallelujah. Seeing we have this ministry, we faith not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Hallelujah. That scripture is prophetic. If you read it, just pause a bit and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. The ministry, there is no pretense in the ministry. Many are struggling in ministry today because why? They are not living a transparent life. They are not living a transparent life. They are not living a transparent life. The other day, we were talking with some, some ministers, and it was said that a minister left his church on a Sunday like this and went to cruise with a girlfriend. Went to cruise with a girlfriend, leaving his wife. Tell me, how that church, would that church be vibrant? Will there be fire in that church? The answer is practical and capital no. Everybody in that church will be weak from head to toe. Transparent life. 
There was a time somebody had to call me, Pastor, please pray for my bishop, pray for our church. Everybody from head to toe are committing immorality. Immorality. What is transparency? Transparent Christian living is living your whole self in and out without hiding anything. It's living your whole self without hiding anything. I tell people that, look, boss into my house any day, any time. If you see any incriminating thing, don't call me your pastor again. I said it when I was in Nigeria, and I repeated it when I'm in America here. You come to my house, you see any incriminating thing, like maybe uh, 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 things that have to do with worshiping other gods. Things that are not of God, you find it in my house, don't come in pastor again, don't come in minister of God again. I say with all humility, it's not pride, all humility. Because why? I want success. I want success. I want victory as far as the ministry, as my ministry is concerned. I have to put every other thing by the way, by the by the wayside. Hallelujah. Do away with everything that has to do with the flesh. The flesh will come. It's not that it will not come, it will come. It will come. But transparency. Living a level of transparency, it is paramount, it is expedient, it is important for every minister. Even when it comes to issue of money, a minister, a leader must be transparent. In every church that I've pastored, I have a treasurer, I have a secretary, and they all have a role to play. The treasurer is the one that handles money. That does not say, I don't know every expenditure in the church. I know everything that has to do with income and expenditure. Hallelujah. And at the end of the year, we have what is called church year. And at the end of the year, I will ask the treasurer, in conjunction with the secretary, they will prepare what is called income and expenditure that will be read to every member. Not only to be read, it will be printed and be distributed to every member of the church to take home a week before the general meeting. And they have the right to ask questions. And as a pastor, the treasurer and the secretary also have the right to answer those questions at the general meeting. I want to beg us, one of the things that makes a church strong is for the leaders to be transparent, wholeheartedly, in and out, not to hide anything, spiritually and physically. John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20 and 21. Say, and this is the commendation that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil ha hated the light, neither comment to the light, least his deed should be reproved. 21. But he that doeth truth comment to the light, that his deed might be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. If we are light, let us also walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Most churches are dying because leaders are not living a transparent life. When it comes to money, they hide money from their members. Meanwhile, you members pay offering. They pay tithes. At the end of the year, Draw an income and expenditure. Let them see it. How many, how, how much tithe came in for the church year? How much offering came in at the church year? Then what do you use the money for? How much do you use in paying for light? State it. How much do you use in paying for water? State it. Let them see it. They are stakeholders. My experience have shown that most of us, we are not transparent when it comes to issue of money. I pray God will help us. Will help us. 
the church must be repositioned to its original status. And repositioning to the church to the original status must start from me, must also start from you. What is transparency? Transparency is living your life in accordance with biblical standards. It's living your life in accordance with biblical standard. Hallelujah. Go with me quickly to Romans chapter 2, and I'm reading verse 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which, he, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But see verse 29. Please note that and mark it in your scripture. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Circumcision of the heart, inwardly. Doing things that are of God and running away from things that have to do with the flesh. Living our life according to biblical standard, not according to the world sta worldly standard, not according to the standard of the United States of America. Yes, America has its own culture. Every nation, every country, every villages all over the world have their own traditional culture. But we as leaders, we are in between two cultures. Number one, our traditional culture, and number two, biblical culture. But you will agree with me that biblical culture supersedes our own culture. In other words, so therefore, by the time we became born again, we, and we have been separated from our own culture. No wonder the Bible speaking in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, there is no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. The moment I became born again, the moment I confessed Jesus Christ as my personal and savior, I am now bound to begin to live a transparent life, detaching from my old life. Transparent Christian living. It is mandatory. It is not negotiable. For our life, our ministry, and our church, to be repositioned to its original status. Transparency. What is transparent? Transparent is inviting others to know whom truly you are. To know whom truly you are. To know whom truly you represent. We all represent Jesus Christ. We are all ambassadors of Jesus Christ here on this earth. And as ambassador of, this, of Jesus Christ, we have our own modus operandi on the way we have, we have the way of, of operation which is different from the culture of where we belong. We are Christ's ambassadors. If you go, if you, I, 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 I can prove it to you, you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, hallelujah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and begin to see there, and uh, precisely verse 20, hallelujah, precisely verse 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 20, say, now then, we ambassadors for Christ, as though God did deceive you by us, we pray you in Christ, steady by ye reconciled to God. We are Christ ambassadors. And as Christ ambassadors, we have our own role. We have our own schedule of duty. And one of our own schedule of duty is to live a transparent Christian life. Our ministers of God, without transparency, hallelujah, we cannot be a one another's burden. Without transparency, I repeat, we cannot bear one another's burden. We will be given excuses. We will be given excuses when it when it has to do 
with 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 others you discover that to for to be able to detach from the flesh will be difficult but if we begin to live a transparent life you discover that we will be trans we will be transcending we will be detaching from the spirit of self and embracing others burden also particularly those of us in the household of faith and that's what the bible says in galatians chapter 6 and if you go and read it from verses 9 and 10 we must be able to bear one another's burden, and for us to be able to do that, we have to live a transparent life. Hallelujah. A transparent life. Quickly go with me again to John, John chapter 8. I said, I'm just laying the foundation for this particular uh, 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 team for this month. I believe God that other highly anointed ministers of God will come in and dig deeper into a John 8 and in verse 12 precisely. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If we follow Jesus Christ holistically, holistically, hallelujah, we will be living a transparent life by the special grace of God. I made up my mind to read the scripture back to back, particularly the New Testament, to be able to study the life and the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I begin to walk consciously to key myself into that life. To key myself into that life. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 6 and in verse 20, it says, Bear ye one another bear you one another bear you one another's burden and so fulfill the law of christ the law of christ the law of christ transparency transparent christian life preaching practicing what we preach i must practice the gospel that i preach hallelujah for us to have a sound biblical strong footing church and the members we need to live a sound transparent christian life transparency is is what is is to be ready at all times to give accountability and acknowledge honest living and acknowledge honest living Acknowledge honest living. I told us, hallelujah, this is what I do. And because I do it, the church was always growing from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Making things open to every leader of my church. Not only that, to every other members. We will print the income and expenditure. It's, one, it's done once a year at the church year ending. And we'll give every member one copy to go and study it a week before. And then come back on the meeting day to ask their questions if they have anyone at all. Hallelujah. Now, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Let a man so account us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the masters of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Be found faithful. Hallelujah. Quickly, zero with me. What are the three facts? Three facts about transparent, about transparent Christian living. Three facts. Number, number one fact is that transparency makes you attractive. Hallelujah. To others to see you as their role model. To see you as their role model. This we saw in the life of the apostles after Pentecost. People begin to see the apostles as a role model. From out of Apostle chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And by the time they got to chapter 11 and precisely verse 26. In the land of Antioch. They say of truth, these ones, they are Christians. These ones of truth, they were Christian because why? They've been separated 
from the system of this world. They've detached themselves from the culture of the constituency where they belong and attach themselves to the kingdom culture. Transparent Christian living is also to practice what we preach. It is not enough to preach love when we don't practice love. It is not enough to preach peace when we are not practicing peace. It is not enough to preach righteousness when we are not practicing righteousness. If I preach righteousness, I must be the first to practice righteousness. If I preach peace, I must be the first to practice that peace. If I preach love, I must be the first to do what? To practice that love. To practice that love. So much when it comes to the time of giving, or extending to my brother, I must not withhold. I must not withhold. We must detach from this spirit of self. We must detach from this spirit of self. I'm not pastoring. I don't have a building where I pastor church. Like I said, it's not boasting and it's not pride. Please, for God's sake, it is not boasting and it's not pride. I don't have a building where I gather people to preach the gospel every Sunday. But some people call me, people call me from now and then, Pastor, have you gotten a place? Have you gotten a place you want to come in? You want to come in? They continue asking me now and then, calling me. And these are people, these are sisters, these are brothers that belong to one church or the other. They belong to one church or the others. In America, yeah. Even back in Nigeria. Some of them will call me who are not even members of my church, but they know me and they, they can get my, uh, my phone number and they will call me and say, Pastor, sis, sis. I say, look, why can't you go and discuss with your pastor? Go and discuss with your pastor. Go and discuss that issue with your pastor. I'm billions of miles away from you. And you will see that sister will not be happy. I'm talking about Christian, transparent Christian living. Hallelujah. Number two, transparency provides opportunity to do an assignment truthfully. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24. And number three, facts about transparency, it creates the boldness to live a balanced Christ, to live a balanced Christian living or life. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2 and verse 7 and 8. Let's read Titus chapter 2. If you get there before me, please, you can also read it. Titus chapter 2. Hallelujah. And uh, verse uh, 7 and uh, 8. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, gravity, sincerity, verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Many of our members, many, many Christians, many Christians today, many people today, they don't go to churches because why? some of the way that some leaders behave some of the some of the some of the way some leaders behave some of the way they behave even in their offices some people made up their mind and say look i will never go to the church i will never attend any church because why he or she have seen the way a church leader behaves either in the office or somewhere hallelujah like i said Situation will arise to test your faith. The situation will arise to dapple your transparency, to try your transparency in God, both in life and ministry. Situation will come to challenge you, to want to put you to shame, but you must stand and say, no. There was a day I was driving in Nigeria. As I was driving, I got to a hold up. And this brother at my back was doing phone call. Before you know it, he heated my car. And when he heated my car, the thing sounded in my brain. Hallelujah. And I came out. I came out. I said, what is all this? Before I can make two, three statements, I, I, I begin to hear people around. Pastor, pastor, pastor. 
pastor, pastor. I'm going to hear people shouting, pastor, pastor. You can imagine if I have throw some punches on this brother. You can imagine if I've caused this brother and we begin to quarrel or fight. Brothers and sisters, ministers of God in the Lord, those that were calling me pastor, pastor, these are, these are young coming Christians. These are people we are still ministering to in that environment. So there will be tests of time. But me and you must remain steadfast in the Lord. What are the benefits of uh, transparency in Christian living? What are the benefits? Number one benefit is that it enhances your relationship with others. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. I will not be able to read it, note it. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. And uh, Hallelujah. It enhances our relationship with others. It enhances our relationship with our members. Most ministers are losing respect. Most leaders in churches today, they are losing respect because why? The members know what is going on in the life of that pastor or that leader. It is not worthy. It is not worthy. Some of the leaders in our churches, they are the one causing pastors to commit sin. Because why? They will tighten things for pastors. They will make things, they will want to make ministry to be difficult for pastors for no good reason. But I tell you, brother and sister, if you have such leaders in your church, all you need to do, um, <laughs> oh my God, you pray that brother out. You pray that leader out. Before you know it, he or she will pack his bag and baggage and leave that church. Because why? He's not there to come and make things difficult for you. When you have tried your best to talk to him, to make him see reasons or make a series, and he's still persecuting you, he's still making things difficult for you. A brother like that was, was doing like that in one of our churches in Nigeria. And it was because of it, he was appointed as a deacon. Even he was appointed as a deacon, he keep on persecuting the senior pastor. He keep on ganging out people. But it's not quite long. He will find his way out. Go and check him out. Hallelujah. But what am I trying to say here? Your relationship with everyone must be able to balance. Don't take advantage. We must not take advantage. Hallelujah. We must not take advantage. In America, people take people's, people take advantage of people. People take advantage of ministers. We must be able to stand as ministers. Let them know where we belong. Let them know where we stand. We must not be all weather. Number two benefit that it is still hope and faith in others. It is still hope. Hallelujah. Transparency, you, transparency in you is still hope and faith in others. They see you as a leader still hoping on God and having strong faith like our Papa Abraham in Romans chapter 4 verse 20 and 21 and when you go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 Papa Abraham had a strong faith in God he never, he never lose faith he have hope in God and we saw what God did in his life the same thing for we as Papa Abraham of today. The same for we apostles of today. We must be able to do what? Instill hope and faith in others. When people come to us that they are having a headache, what do we do first? We must not be able to say, oh, we're not, it's not for us to say, go to the hospital. We have to pray first. We have to pray first. Where others are feeling discouraged, we give them hope. We let them have that faith. That hope and faith in God supersede hope and faith in science. I repeat, that hope and faith in God supersede hope and faith in science. And it is my duty, it is your duty to make that brother, that sister, know that through our transparency, in, in, as a Christian journey conscience. Hallelujah. Number three benefit is that it projects God's glory in the life of an individual. It projects God's glory 
in the life of an individual. Hallelujah. You carry glory. God will not dwell in, the, in, a, in a body that is polluted. God will not have banates. God will not have banates with sinful hearts, with sinful mind. Hallelujah. It can only have banates with a holy life, with a holy life, with a life that is transparent. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. And lastly, here, hallelujah, is that benefits of transparency, number four, it enhances, it facilitates, it facilitates answers to prayers and stability in life. It facilitates answers to prayers and stability in life. In life, first chronicles and second chronicles chapter 7, verses 14 to 16. Second chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 to 16 is a popular scripture. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. It, it facilitates answer prayers when you live a transparent Christian life, you cannot pray and, uh, and expect answers later. You pray, and answer comes immediately. Answer comes immediately. You want to go to any office, you want to go to anywhere, you, you tell God that is what you expect in that journey. You get there, you meet what you have asked for. Hallelujah. Anytime I'm going to any office, I tell God, God, this I want a social person to I want to meet a social person in that office, and that's the person I will meet. If I say I'm going to meet, for example, if I say I'm going to meet a sister there, and that's the sister I will meet. I don't know the sister. God, please, it's a woman I want to attend to me in that office. And when I go to that office, it's a woman that will attend to me. God, please, as I'm going to that office, I want a man to attend to me and to give me what I want in that office. And as I'm going to that office, by the time I get there, it's going to be a man that I'm going to meet there. Transparency facilitates quick answers. To prayers and it does what it stabilizes it stabilizes life one will be happy always you will not owe anybody and nobody owes you you don't owe anybody and nobody owes you if it is not working part time leave it don't struggle with it don't struggle with it don't leave it sometimes I need certain things and the thing is not coming, I do what? I leave it. I will not lose my transparency in God because of that. I will leave it. At God's own appointed time, it will come. At God's own appointed time, it will come. All to the glory of Almighty God. Transparency in Christian living. I want to pray God that God in infinite mercy will begin to help us to remain steadfast in him and to live a transparent Christian life in and out and uh, by the grace of God to transport it to all our members, our leaders, hallelujah, that at the end of the day, we'll have a glorious assembly expecting the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and that when it shall come, whether the enemy like it or not, we shall all rapture with him because he's coming. Jesus Christ's second coming is coming for a church without spot and wrinkle. And God will grant me and you that grace to transcend, hallelujah, above spot and wrinkle and make heaven at last in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are all blessed together exceeding abundantly in Jesus name amen amen thank you very much Reverend Gabriel what a wonderful opening and beginning of this June theme the transparent uh, Christian living thank you very much uh, uh, we have uh, uh, just uh, only a few minutes so uh, we have to move a little bit quick today, but uh, please uh, <coughs> prepare your comment concisely and uh, really what is uh, re your takeaway from the uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, by the Reverend Gabriel. Uh, let's start with uh, uh, Reverend Garvan. 
Yeah, so thank you, Reverend Gabriel, brother. That was really refreshing and uh, you renewed in my mind the transformative power of the living word of God. You shared with us, I think I, I really profoundly uh, agree with, with everything you said. And, uh, you know, it's very hard, but I, I think as you were talking about the benefits of being transparent, transparency is also that the members, that the, 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 the children of God will also trust you and will also see in your transparency the strength of God and the weakness of man. And they will be able to themselves be able to report to you mm. and be able to to really, you know, reveal their own struggles. And this is very important because if we as leaders, if we always show that we're supermen, then um, people actually, they feel distant and they also feel the hypocrisy. And I, I like what you were talking about is this transparency is ridding ourselves of that mask. Get rid of the mask. Get rid of that uh, that layer of um, of sin. And in our environment, we have to all the time. I, I like the history of restoration. Our restoration, so we can refresh ourselves wantingly for being steadfast, uh, as we are. Uh, you know, as as we say, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you, as in James uh, uh, so four. Uh, also, uh, four uh, eight. So this is very important for us, I think, to hear what you said. Thank you very much, Reverend Gabriel. Thank you, Reverend Garvan. Yeah, very good point. Uh, how about uh, uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Jennifer? Would you like to make a comment? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to greet God ahead of my life, and I want to greet everyone of God. Awesome, wonderful dignitary in this forum today. Um, I applaud you, Reverend Gabriel, for this wonderful teaching about um, transparency. And as you're getting so deep into so many things that you put out about the church, and transparency is one of the most important things to lead. As a leader, you're supposed to be very transparent. You, you know, leaders are, always have to be open. And you can be eating and then you said you are fasting and then you tell your brethren to fast and you are eating. You, know, you have to be open mm -hmm. up in, in everything you do in the word. You can't be hiding someone, bringing some. You have to be transparent in the word. In everything you do, you have to be transparent. And, and not only in church, wherever you are, you have to be transparent. Yeah, some people, you know, they, they will open up and they hide everything when they're at work in the house. They don't live a life that is pleasing. At work, they don't live a sober life. And you know that and they hide the gospel. Nobody know they are leaders. Nobody know they are Christian. You know, they don't reach out to the souls that are out there, you know. So they keep hiding stuff. And strangely, you have to be open up. Let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord. He has crucified for us. So we have to make sure that we transfer it in everything we do. And I applaud the um, Reverend Gabriel. The teaching was powerful. <laughs> um, transparency is something clear that you can see, you can see through. Amen. Um, Amen. Thank you very much, Minister Jennifer. Okay, let's hear from the uh, Reverend uh, Edna uh, Lewis. Uh, Thank you very much, Brother Okamoto. Well, I think uh, Reverend Gabriel did exactly what he said he was going to do. He laid a, a, a strong uh, foundation. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, really drawing on some very fundamental scriptures, you know, for, for that particular theme. Uh, so, you know, I feel that he did a great job with that. And uh, the area where I, he really stressed, of course, was the area of transparencies. And I, I tie that to the statement, uh, one of the scriptures where it speaks of us as ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is someone who represents 
An ambassador is someone who stands in place of. Mm -hmm. And we are therefore charged not just to speak a word, but to actually represent the word. Right. And, and you know, to the extent that we, we fail or we can become uh, like blind guides, as the mm -hmm. Bible says, for others to and, and lead them astray rather than draw them to the light of Christ, the light that that we represent as ambassadors. So I, 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 uh, I but then again, I, I thank him because he really, uh, uh, Pastor Gabriel really, uh, via the, uh, especially the, the, the New Testament uh, word, uh, picked, chose the, the right scriptures as the foundation for this month's theme. So my, my uh, homework is cut out for me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Bishop Workers, would you like to make a short comment? Thank you very much, everyone. May God bless all of you, especially Reverend Gabriel. Very beautiful message. So today, uh, Roman chapter. 13 verse 11 to 14 in the closing verses of the chapter Paul enforces this exhortation to mutual love as the fulfilling of the law by reference to the approaching Russia we must all appear and who can tell how soon before the judgment mm. seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in the body. If the O and the imported, uh, import, importation of that great truth descend upon our Heart, we shall feel how urgent the postal exhortation is. Corinthians chapter 6, verse 6, 1 Corinthians uh, verse 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 8. It sums up all that prece uh, precedes, but Especially Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10, is not the time strictly, but the time they lived in with its moral import, its critical place in the working out of God designs. It is their time regarded as having a character of its own, full of sanctification for them. No Christian should be asleep, yet the ordinary life of all of our drossy compared with what it, uh, it should be and with the uh, what it would be if the Christian hope were perpetually present to us. For now is salvation nearer us than when we believed has here the uh, transcend, uh, transcended eschatological sense it is the final and complete deliverance from sin and death and the reception into the heavenly kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. This salvation was always near to the faith of the apostles and with the lapse of time it became, of course, nearer Yet it has often been remarked at that in his letter, Pastor Paul seemed to 
contemplate not merely the possibility but the probability that the himself would not live to see it mm. thank you uh, brother gabriel god bless you Amen. all of you thank you very much mm. thank you uh, welcome Yeah. Thank you. Finally, the, uh, we have a Reverend Bruce Gardner today. Uh, hope uh, you are able to uh, read us, Reverend Gardner. Are you there? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Gabriel. Yeah. You know, the word transparency to me really reminds me of uh, mm -hmm. and connected to humility. You know, and um, and I think. Transparency actually causes us to be humble because when we're really transparent, we also show as 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 uh, Reverend Galvin had mentioned, you know, that oftentimes pastors are put in the position of Superman, put themselves in the position of Superman, you know, or some super being, and and they are on a pedestal. But I think the more transparent the more humble then people can not only you know honestly connect to that person but also there's the process of how he became that kind of person and so i think that whole process is very important because just like christ you know and it would be christ like you know the pastor should be you know showing us how to be christ like the process not only the not only you know the final conclusion or the destination so yeah so i think humility is is also very very uh, apropos to to being to being um you know a good descriptive word of also being transparent and you might have even mentioned that uh, reverend gabriel so i'm just uh, but anyway thank you for your message and the clarity of your message this, this afternoon Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Bruce uh, Grana. Thank you. That uh, really good to see you. And uh, yes, uh, this uh, message, and particularly the uh, if, if we are not transparent, that uh, of course transparency requires the incredible vulnerability and courage. Uh, you know, we have to show everything, right? Uh, uh, are we all perfect or are we completely in line with God's will in every single uh, day and everything we do? Actually, it's not. Of course not. And we, even the St. Paul confessed so clearly that, uh, you know, uh, the, he's, uh, he's always in the uh, battle, uh, battle with the sin. He to con continuously uh you know fighting against the uh, sin so that's that is our reality so but if we are not transparent what i i felt that the uh, reverend gabriel uh indicated that the uh, uh, benefit of the transparency is uh that creating the uh you know relationship uh, authentic true relationship with uh your members and also the other people so basically if we hide something uh if it's uh, maybe ugly and it's something that not in line with uh you know uh, what what scripture said but actually we also hide uh hide god within ourselves right so we lose we lose our identity as the children of God and the disciple of Jesus Christ. That part also will be hidden. So transparency, of course, you know, it requires courage. You know, we, we need to show who we are, whether it's good or not so good. <laughs> we all have those. But the fundamentally, we do have we do have an essence of God within ourselves, and the Christ is living. That we need, we need to also show that. So we cannot be, uh, you know, just uh, 
uh, either either uh, bad part. We, we I mean the if we we hide the bad part, we hide the good part either. <laughs> Both. Mm, mm. So we have to be transparent. Thank you very much. That's my takeaway. So let's have a prayer. Oh, the Reverend Reginald, and uh, uh, would you like to uh, give a, just a short, short comment and give us a, a closing prayer? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, Reverend Emily, have uh, taken us to give us the open remark on what is expected from us this month based on our topic. Uh, I don't want to add or subtract anything from what you have said this hour for us because it's a good thing for us one, for us to know our responsibility in as much as us knowing our responsibility and discharging our duty, we ought to be also transparent in whatever thing we do. Why? Because we are the light of the world. When you are a leader, you are leading in any field or in any area of special duty you are being called, you need to show yourself responsible. The responsibility is being responsible. There is a responsibility, being transparent in your responsibility, being committed in your work and transparent because what you do is what your followers will do. Mm -hmm. The legacy you lay in whatever thing you are doing is what you will be judged with. Therefore, we must be truly transparent in discharging our duties and our responsibilities. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this hour. We bless your name. For the word which you have spoken through your servant this hour, and for the knowledge we have acquired through the teaching of your word, we ask, Lord, for your grace because it's only your grace that can help us to be transparent, to be responsible in our duties, which have been called or committed into our hands. Without you, O oh Lord, we are nothing, and we cannot do anything. Therefore, Lord, make this ministry we are called into, O oh Lord, to be easy for us by leading the direction, leading the way for us to follow. Thank you for your word this hour. Thank you for everyone that contributed this hour to the knowledge of your word. Because your word says, iron sharpened iron. Therefore, this hour we have been sharpened. Glory be to your name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your servant. You have used this hour, O Lord. We ask, O oh Lord, for more grace upon his life. And we ask, O oh Lord, for more grace also upon each and every one that is here, that could have been called into this ministry. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that after our rest here on earth, O oh Lord, whatever thing we have done, whatever thing have been committed into our hand, that we all will make heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the convener, the leader of this restoration hour. I ask, O oh Lord, for your grace, for your sufficiency upon the family of Okamoto. They have sacrificed to make us, O oh Lord, to be together here alone. I pray, O oh Lord, that you alone will be sufficient for all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, keep us, O Lord. Guide us, O Lord. Protect us, O Lord, until we meet again next Sunday. Mm -hmm. Father, I also pray, O Lord, ahead for a servant you are going to use, O Lord. Father, greater wisdom and knowledge of your word upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ. And let there be more light, O Lord, 
into this topic of the month that at the end of it all we all will glorify your name in the name of jesus christ i pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. the grace Amen. Uh, before, before we share the grace, please. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, 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 one of the pastors, Pastor, Pastor Regina, Hallelujah, called to ask for uh, assistance from everyone, every one of us on this platform, uh, with an urgent assistance to be able to settle his uh, children's school fees right now back in Nigeria. I know Nigeria is very tough now, so he needs our help. So, Reg Pastor Regina is here. Please, uh, you are there, Pastor Regina. Yes, so, sir. He called Praise me the before. Lord. He called me for now, so he's here. So, please, uh, maybe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um. I'm very sorry that uh, I spoke with uh, Reverend Gabriel because I can tell you I have tried my best. Uh, not that God is not working. God has been working because mm -hmm. my daughters that sang this evening here in Nigeria is this night. It's night and there is afternoon, which I know in U.S. Uh, God gives us a good thing. It's a blessing for us, for two of them. They are twins, two of them to get admission into the Federal University here in Nigeria. It's Federal University of Technology. One is to study public health management technology, while the other one is to, is to study, giving admission to study project management technology. By the grace of God, I was able to clear one, uh, all her details, everything, matriculation had been uh, received, then to fund. The other sister, the twin sister, who is to study uh, project management technology, her uh, own now. I, I have deadline to Tuesday to finish up their registration and payment of everything into the university. Uh, I believe God, that God who made it possible for two of them at the same time to go that mission, that the same God will be able to do things because that's why I call Reverend Gabriel and told him, say, ah, I really need support and help now because uh, I trust God that all things will be very, very possible and easy for me because for God to make it possible for them, when they see for their O-level exam, God made declared all their papers at once. They went for the jump examination to the university. They got their results and the admission was granted unto them. Uh, to God, I give all the glory and I know that God will not put me to shame and God will not let me down. So I'm um, just the way it is now, I'm just looking up to like $300 uh, to clear up the bills, the accommodation, and the, the, uh, the registration fund for the second of them, the one for project management technology, to make sure that uh, by Tuesday, I am through with all the payments by the grace of God. So that's why I have to call Reverend Gabriel to solicit for support and help. Thank you all. Amen. Yeah. Uh, how uh, Reverend uh, I, I can I can make an offering of one hundred and twenty. How would I do that? Uh, get get it to Elder Kamoto. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, I can uh, I can sell it to you. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can do that, and I'll I'll send. I, yeah, I believe I have. I, I believe I have your phone yeah, number. My, uh, my cell phone number. You can deal to us, and uh, I will send to Reverend Reginald. Oh. My cell phone is eight four five five nine six two six eight zero. Got it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you, richly. God Lord. bless you. Yes. Thank you, so, sir. So yeah. please, if you. Yes. Whatever God lays in your heart, just uh, transfer it to Elder Kamoto. Elder Kamoto will get it to him. Yeah. So, we are all blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you all. And next Sunday, let's meet again to fire on. Uh, like we have had our 
our own anointed Reverend uh, Edna will be taking us deeper and better to what we and better to what we had today. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe broader. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brother Edna. 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 Thank we wish all of us the best of the new week in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, but Jesus the Christ, one, the love of the God, the and Spirit. the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Rest be with us us. all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, His goodness, and, goodness and, mercy and mercy shall follow us oh, all the days of our lives. Of our lives. And, and we shall, shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever Amen. and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, sons. Thank you, sons. Thank you. Hello. Reverend Galvan, Reverend Edna, Bishop mm -hmm. Wakas. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody was in a uh, infix phone. No, no. Please, you are all welcome. God bless every one of you on this platform of our uh, restoration. Please, let's meet again next Sunday. And God bless you, in Jesus' name. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Gabriel. Bishop Wakas.